Let's talk about same-sex marriage cases in 2023. Hi, I'm Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States at our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. You know, it is Pride Month, and we are happy to support same-sex couples in the immigration process. We've been doing it since the Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act in the Obergfell decision back in 2015. We were one of the first uh, offices in St. Louis and in Missouri, and I think even in the country, to file a same-sex marriage-based case. And so it's really only been eight years since that historic decision. I remember meeting with lots of same-sex couples before that who were hoping to be able to sponsor their uh, loved one for an immigration benefit, and USCIS did not allow it. Federal law did not allow it. Congress had passed the Defense of Marriage Act, which made it that it had to be between a man and a woman, and refused to allow there to be any kind of immigration benefits for same-sex couples, even though they might have been legally married in other states. And so that became a sea change, and we've really enjoyed working on these cases for the last eight years. Now, in 2023, there's a lot to be concerned about. You know, the uh, right-wing Republicans are always on the attack. They're always looking for people to scapegoat and to vilify. And we've already seen legislation passed in certain states that would once again make marriage between a man and a woman. And there is definite concern that if someone like Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis were elected president again, and that the Supreme Court being what it is, that the Obergefell decision could be revisited, that holding, that same-sex couples should be able to get married and that the Defense of Marriage Act was unconstitutional. So there's a real concern now, and I understand it, because we don't want to go back to those days before 2015 when same-sex couples were not able to petition for an immigration benefit for the foreign national. So that's one big area of concern is sort of, are we going to roll back the clock like the Republicans are doing in so many other aspects of our lives, like abortion? and women's rights and uh, the rights of same-sex couples to be together. So that's something that's very troubling, very upsetting, and we really hope uh, that at least the president remains a Democrat and that we're able to keep such stupid legislation at bay, at least on the national level, and we will just have to wait to see about that. But when it comes to filing a same-sex marriage case, it's going to be like a typical marriage case. You're going to have to show that the relationship is real, that it wasn't entered into a... Uh, for purposes of an immigration benefit, that it's because the couple were in love and that they have a long history together. You're going to have to show everything you have to show uh, for cases involving heterosexual couples. You're going to have to show that there's you know, a, a logical basis for this relationship, that the couple has a long history together, that it, they have a demonstrated relationship with each other. Uh, and then they're going to have to show that the foreign national is someone that we want to either let get an immigrant visa to the United States or to adjust their status here in the United States. So with any marriage-based case, whether it's a same-sex couple or not a same-sex couple, those are the two big issues, the I-130 and the 45. Is the marriage real? Is it not entered into for purposes of an immigration benefit? And uh, is the foreign national a person that we want to give a green card to or that is a uh, good person that is deserving of lawful permanent residence? So Now, when it comes to the practicality of things, so sometimes same-sex couples have logistical issues that they have to deal with that aren't necessarily true in other kinds of cases. Well, what do you mean by, Jim? Well, in some countries, a same-sex couple cannot get married. Of course, in many predominantly Muslim countries and other countries in the world, because of religious laws or just general laws on the books, they prohibit same-sex couples from getting married. This makes the immigration process a little bit more complicated because a lot of times the foreign national can't come to the United States. They can't go to Vegas and get married. They are relying on usually getting married in the home country. So this is why sometimes we have fiancé cases for same-sex couples, and that's where we start. So it's all going to depend on whether or not the couple can actually get legally married. And this is something that is sort of a a harbinger of what life was like back before 2015. That was sort of, that was true here in Missouri. In Missouri, where I live, you couldn't marry someone who was of the same sex, and people had to go to Iowa or other places to get married. And, you know, so that's true in other countries in the Middle East and uh, other places around the world that they do not recognize same-sex marriages. And if if the marriage is not recognized, You can't get someone to record it with the government, and therefore you're not going to be able to start the immigration process. So that's the biggest thing 
uh, that's different between same-sex couples and heterosexual couples is that unfortunately the same-sex couples have like real-world impact because of the laws on the books in those countries that prevent them from getting married. So obviously we don't want to return to that back here in the United States, but in the meantime, same-sex couples are left with sort of the decision to either go the fiancé route or to visit a third country and get married there under the laws there. But of course, that can also be problematic because sometimes it's hard when no one is from that third uh, country to get a marriage license. If, if, if one couple member is from that country, it's a whole lot easier. So if you're thinking, well, my husband or my fiance lives in Egypt and we can't get married in Egypt, so let's go to France and get married in France. Well, one, can the Egyptian national get a visa to, the United, to France? And can we get legally married in France even though neither of us are French citizens? So these are the kinds of headaches that same-sex couples have to deal with. But generally, I have found USCIS and even the embassies to treat most same-sex couples fairly. They treat them like regular cases. At first, we were worried that that wasn't going to be the case. But so far, I would say, in all my criticisms of USCIS, this is one that I would probably lay off on them. I don't feel like they treat these cases differently. Um, and I think that it's definitely something that you can do. You can get a green card based on marriage uh, of a same-sex type. And if you're looking for representation, if you're looking for a lawyer to help you through that process, we've handled you know hundreds and hundreds of marriage-based cases, and many of those involve same-sex couples. So if you are wanting to hire us, give us a call, 314-961-8200. You can email us, info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com. Now, if you're just looking for free information, please don't call the office. Instead, join us in our Facebook group. It's called Immigrant Home. We'd love to have you there. There's almost 10,000 immigrants in there talking about the immigration process every single day. And we have our YouTube channel with hundreds and hundreds of videos, free content that you can access and get answers to almost any immigration law-related type question. And then finally, we also have our Immigration Answer Show, where if you have a particular question and you're just looking for a quick answer, you can come on there and ask me. I go live three or four times a week for a full hour, trying to answer as many immigration law-related questions as I can in that time. In the meantime, I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you next time.